Good evening, everybody, and welcome to this inaugural show of the Diabetes Total Lifestyle Change Program. This month, November, is the Diabetes Awareness Month. And interestingly, the quote or the slogan for the 2023 Diabetes Day is, if there's diabetes, then we cannot live a comfortable life. That was last year. So let us fight against it and aim for a healthier life. Warm wishes to everyone on World Diabetes Day. That is why we are here today, because we want to learn what diabetes is, how we can manage it, who is at risk, what do we need to do. And especially it's important because many of us are exposed to diabetes. Is it your father, your mother, yourself, your friend? I know in my case, it's my dad. And so it makes a difference. I'd like to know what to do so that this program is a success. Who is at risk in your family? What do we need to do to fight diabetes? Well, the program will highlight this. And for the next six weeks, we shall be learning what to do. But on the inaugural show, we want to learn what it is that we need to do. How do we detect that we have diabetes? What do we need to do? What is diabetes? And how do we manage it in the next six weeks? To let her help us do this is um, Dr. Alice Sojuang, who is a very skilled nutritionist or dietitian. She has been managing diabetes for a long, long time. We're talking about over 20 years. So we can trust her skill. We can trust her judgment. And so we wish to welcome you, Dr. Ojuang. She is not only a practitioner managing diabetes, but she also lectures. And so we, we look forward to learning from her and using this information to help us in our lives for those of us who are at risk and also for those our family members. So Dr. John, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ms. Lorraine. We appreciate that you can help us. So thank you everybody for coming today. And um, we're here to support you, but maybe uh, before we continue, I'll just play a six minute video as we wait for people to come in and then we shall continue with the program. Let me just share the, the, the video and then we can uh, take it from there. Where are you now, video? Yeah, of course. Maybe as you get that, Dr. Ojuan, yes. the slogan for, the, for World Diabetes Day this November is know your risk, know your response is the slogan for the World Diabetes Day 2023 campaign. And this focuses on the importance of knowing your risk of developing type two diabetes and highlighting the need to access the right information and care to manage diabetes related complications. So there we are today, learning the right info, getting the right information to manage diabetes. So Dr. John, please take us through. Thank you. You said three things, please say it again, know your risk, Know your risk, know your response. That's the slogan. Yes. And it focuses on one, the importance of knowing your risk of developing type 2 diabetes, and then highlighting the need to access the right information and care to manage diabetes-related complications. Thank you. So as we wait for people to get in, please let's just watch a short success story. In Introduce myself. My name is Jack Tony Gachuguma. A resident of uh, Samburu County, Maralai Town, the town headquarters. I'm a businessman involved in microfinance. I was diagnosed with uh, type 2 diabetes here in Maralal. I had a funny lifestyle. I was eating anyhow, I was doing things anyhow. I, and then a friend referred me to Dr. Eva. I traveled all the way to Nairobi and uh, I was lucky to meet uh, Dr. Navera and Dr. Iba. They really helped me. I was diagnosed with, uh, and now they, <clears throat> they confirmed I had diabetes. <clears throat> I had uh, a lifestyle problem. Um, uh, I was eating everything. I was also involved. I had taken some quite uh, 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 alcohol. And now uh, I was also taking uh, a drug known as uh, 
prednisolone because I had a chest problem, so an allergy. So I had, uh, some, some, I remember it, uh, like 15 years ago, a doctor uh, gave me the prednisolone drug. I, I had been taking it for the last 13 to 15 years. When I came to Nairobi, uh, doctor stopped it because it's the one that caused diabetes. Now with my lifestyle, I had a lot of weight. Because, you know, we didn't, I didn't understand uh, how to even uh, take care of myself in terms of the diet. And after, I, after that uh, diagnosis, uh, they told me my, my liver was damaged. I had a lot of cholesterol. Uh, you know, my, my pressure was also high. Uh, I, in a way, I felt so sick. I felt so frustrated. But they referred me to Dr. Juan. That's where now I started the journey. And Dr. Juan, I, I remember we had the first uh, discussion. She was of great help. She advised me on uh, what I need to do uh, from the beginning. I started focusing on diet, the things not to do and the things to do. Because there's a lot of hearsay. When somebody tells you you have diabetes, you are told all sorts of stories. No, did this, don't do this, don't, you know, that kind of thing. But uh, I was properly advised by Dr. Ajuang. <clears throat> and I, I, I became, I, uh, I strictly followed DTLC. I joined the DTLC program and uh, I began the journey with Dr. Ajuang and she has been of great help. I've been attending these classes faithfully at 8 p.m. every Tuesday. And I can assure the team that uh, I've been able to successfully reverse my condition. I'm on, uh, I'm on, the, on the right journey. I stopped alcohol. Dr. Juang advised me. Uh, I, I, uh, I focused on the diet, eating vegetables in the evening, uh, reduced the carbohydrates. I no longer eat meat in the evening. Uh, in the morning I eat well. I do a lot of exercise. I take a lot of water. I remember she advised me to be doing three liters of water and then do a lot of walks. Though I've not been very efficient with walks uh, uh, for, due to some reasons, but I've been trying. I've been really trying, doing 5,000, 3,000, 5,000, sometimes 6,000 steps on a daily basis. This is what has made me now have the doctor reduce my drugs and uh, uh, I'm, on, I'm in route. I believe in the next one month or one and a half. By the time we're finishing this program. A very inspiring story. Uh, I think we've seen progress. We can see it on your face. <laughs> and we hear you say it. And it is very convincing. Thank you very much for that. I don't know what you have to say to that, Dr. John. Sorry. Well done, well you. done. And this has just been how many weeks? Precisely seven weeks. Because uh, the one week that we started with you, I, I was still an amateur. I was not getting it right. <laughs> so, but, uh, but, but <laughs> I was still making so many mistakes. But um, the seven weeks I've been focusing so much on the uh, instructions by Dr. Joan and uh, following them uh, faithfully. Okay. Um, well done. That's a positive story, Jackson. Yeah. And we wish you the very best. We look for you know, we, we, we hope that you shall reverse your diabetes. You're working with the right people, Dr. Nyawera and Dr. Joan. Yeah. Yes, and, and this, is, this is really encouraging, Jackton, and this is just to encourage everybody here that whatever condition that you have, you can do this. If you can actually reverse type 2 diabetes, I mean, weight loss is easier, you know, yeah? and just eating healthy and feeling good is a lot, lot easier than anything else. Maybe encourage the team that is here and uh, others that maybe will watch us uh, from this. Mm. Tell them that uh, follow the instructions, follow the lessons that uh, we are taught uh, religiously. Follow them. And uh, you, you, you follow the instructions of Dr. Ari. Follow the lessons of the, 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 the trainers who come to talk to us. Very important. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank well you. Done. Well done. Okay. Yes. Yes. So this is just an, an example of uh, some of the success story. And this is where we are trying the six weeks program. Actually, a lot of people have been able to 
just have better control or even reverse type 2 diabetes in just six weeks. But also uh, we have a longer program that's 12 weeks. So people say 12 weeks is long. So we are trying six weeks, but we'll just see how it goes. We want to, so for this program, we want you to give us your feedback. We are going to share exactly what it's all about. But in the meantime, why, 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 why diabetes is in, why this program? So when I was, I think I just finished the university, I was 23 years old. I used to work in a diabetes care center. Um, and so that means I was learning how to educate diabetes and learn about diabetes and educate them about diet. So apart from being a dietitian, I'm also a certified diabetes educator. So I understand a lot more about diabetes than just the diet. So what happened one morning I would go to work and they were testing a machine. We were doing a research project. So they gave us different machines to check the blood sugars of everybody who comes in so that we can see which one is accurate. And as I tested the machine, my sugars were high. Like it was uh, maybe after a meal, it was nine. And the diabetes nurse then said that at least your blood sugars are high. And this one is just a confirmation that you're diabetic. Then I said, that's not possible. I'm not diabetic. But in the meantime, we have many people in my family who have diabetes. So what the nurse told me is that, okay, so it's all right, don't worry, come back in the morning and let's do your blood sugar again. And so when we did the fasting blood sugar, my it was high. And so I was confirmed that I had type two diabetes. I was only 23 years old, so you can imagine. After learning about diabetes, all I could imagine, am I going to go blind? Am I going to get an amputation? What's going to happen to me? Am I going to get a kidney problem? Am I going to get an enlarged heart? And of course I was completely stressed. And so I had to be taken through education so that I can just relax. And so I was on medication, but I was put on medication for six months. I was determined to, to, to make changes. Because I was young, I just finished the university. I just moved out of home. So you can imagine how I was eating. I was never applying any of the nutrition knowledge that I learned in the university. And so I had to stop taking sodas because as a, somebody who lives alone, it's soda and bread and you know, lots of sugary things, quick meals, never eating a proper meal, maybe lots of fruits and not really having a balance. And so I started applying what I was actually teaching my patient. So I stopped all the sugar, sugar in my tea, soda. I stopped eating a lot of carbohydrates. I ate some carbohydrates. I, ate, I still ate bread, but smaller portions. I ate potatoes, smaller portions, but I actually had meals. I changed the variety of vegetables I ate. I reduced the amount of food I was, I was taking. Then I started actually exercising. So after six months, so of course I used to monitor my blood sugar every day, like for the next, for the first four weeks, I was asked to monitor my sugar every day. Fasting blood sugar, one hour after meals, two hour after meals. And I had to monitor the blood sugar every day. And so, and so um, then the, the nurse would help me to see that, okay, what did you eat with your blood? What did you eat? This, this food increases your sugar and this food is good for your sugar. So avoid this and reduce that. And so after six months, actually, I started getting hypoglycemia. What if you're diabetic, you know that you start getting low blood sugar. So you start getting hunger pangs. And so uh, with those getting hunger pangs was an indication that my sugars were now doing much better and the dosage of the medication was high. And so the nurse start re reducing medication, starts reducing medication, and eventually I was not on any medication. It's been 20, almost 25 years since I was diagnosed with diabetes and I have don't have diabetes. My blood sugars, I see it went into remission. I definitely, I check my blood sugars from time to time. And usually when I'm sick, maybe I have some kind of infection, malaria or um, some metabolic illness uh, or infection viral when I'm very sick and down. Sometimes my sugars actually do go up and maybe that's the only time sometimes the doctor recommends I have to take something. But when I'm, when I'm, on my, on my, when I'm in my normal state, exercising regularly, watching my diet, then I'm okay. But imagine that every four seconds, somebody dies of diabetes. 
And every five minutes, somebody is diagnosed with an eye problem or, or somebody is disabled because of their ability. So there's, a, there's definitely, sorry, I think somebody's trying to change. Rosie, would you like to meet the person, please? Okay. Thank you. So you can imagine every few minutes somebody is diagnosed with blindness and somebody is amputated because of diabetes complications. In our, in most, most people do not stay more than 23 years. If they take good care, they can stay for life without complications. But if they don't, if they mismanage their diabetes within five years, you start getting eye problems, you start getting, you know, heart problems, you start getting kidney problems. And you know, it's expensive. You have seen people who've gone blind because of diabetes, who've been, whose who's, um, who's, um, limbs have been amputated because of diabetes, or I mean, poor control of diabetes. Let's say poor control of diabetes, not just diabetes. So it is possible to control your diabetes. It is possible to reverse your type two diabetes. And this is why I'm very passionate about this program because I have seen so many people reverse their type two diabetes. And what, what really the experience is that most of the time, patients are referred to me when their blood sugars are already out of control, when they already have a kidney problem or they are really struggling to control their blood sugar. This is the time most people actually seek for help and also most people are referred, unfortunately, by their doctors. So it always breaks my heart when somebody comes when the sugars are completely bad. But sometimes we, sometimes we still manage to control. Most of the time, you can control your blood sugar. If you get proper education and then we work together with the medical doctor to be able to prescribe accordingly. So it is possible to control. But I don't want people coming last minute when they already have a complication. We, I want to start early. So if you know anybody who's diabetic, who is, who's been told they're pre-diabetic, then if they start early, then they will control their diabetes. And imagine diabetes is a condition that affects the way your body uses food. So if you do not know how to manage your diet, your dosage of medication is always going to go up. And this is what we want to prevent and this we want, want to avoid. So we are here to support you. Thank you and over to you, Ms. Lorraine. Thank you very much for that personal story. So we know you're not just talking, it has also happened to you. Yes. And uh, so it is real. And we trust that what you're teaching us is what we what you what has worked for you for the last 23 years. So thank you very much for that. So do you want to take it professional now? What has been your professional experience managing diabetes? Yeah, so um, my professional experience managing diabetes is like, I think I already mentioned a bit of it. Most people come when there are blood sugars are already very high and already out of control, but that is what you want to prevent. So when the patient comes to me and we go through diabetes education <laughs> and diabetes education involves knowing your numbers, what are your numbers? What does a fasting blood sugar mean? What is a good blood fasting sugar? What is a good um, one hour of prosprandial blood sugars? You know, what is what does a good plate look like according to your age, according to your sex, and according to your needs? So usually when we I have a client come, we have to start by monitoring your blood sugar, and then we we look at what do you eat. And eating means that we need pictures of your food. How does your plate look like? And then we're able to actually use that information to help you manage your plate. And just, it's, it's usually so simple. When people have realized this is the problem, the turnaround is usually very, very quickly. Yeah, maybe I could do with some questions with Lorraine. <laughs> Okay, yes, I was going to ask that. So anyone with some comments or questions for Dr. John this far? You want to find out how successful the program is? What does it involve? How has her experience been? Any questions from the floor? Or any comments also? And 
Okay. Maybe okay. Al well Deng, I'd like you you have you have a question. Feel free to read, to ask or comment. Thank you. I would like to ask when someone has diabetes, does the outside appearance tell that this person has diabetes? Do they look, for example, do overweight people have diabetes or can underweight people also get like the physical appearance? Mm -hmm. Okay, very good question, Alwell. You sound like a very young person, very good question. So yes, there is external appearance, but maybe I want to talk about the symptoms of diabetes. So the symptoms of diabetes include, you have excessive thirst. You're thirsty, and so you drink a lot of water. And then in the process of also drinking a lot of water, you are going out to the bathroom. So you keep going for a short call, so you pee a lot. Then you also get excessive hunger. You're always hungry and you want to eat, which pushes your blood sugar to the next level. You feel extremely tired and fatigued. For people with type 1 diabetes, they actually get an acetone breath. So it's like an acidic breath. When you can smell their breath, it actually smells like acetone. Okay, so so that is that is the signs of of diabetes, but also um, adults. Most people actually are almost diagnosed maybe three years after because the the symptoms are not quite quite obvious. So maybe they will be going to the bathroom to pee. They feel tired, but it is not very obvious. Some people they just feel tired, or they are trying to conceive. They cannot conceive, and they are just completely fatigued, but they don't have other signs of going to the toilet and losing weight. Maybe their weight is just increasing. And so what is good is always important to go for a blood test to be able to know. But the younger people, especially type one, it's very easy to know when somebody is diabetes. And so you also asked, how about the external appearance? Actually, after working with diabetic persons for a very long time, over 20 years, I can tell when somebody is diabetic by just looking at them. And I can also be able to tell that their blood sugars are very high. And I can tell that they're actually already starting to have a kidney problem. But this is because of experience. So, you know, I cannot say those symptoms because when somebody's skin looks pale, sometimes they actually have anemia and it's not diabetes. But for me, because I've been working with diabetes, I can just look and I can tell. I guess it's because I've seen many. I used to work in the hospital. So I saw people who are chronically ill with diabetes. And then as outpatient, just managing them and seeing, you know, when they come in and, you know, their appearance. So I can tell, and many doctors who work with patients, they can tell. Whatever patients they handle, if they handle, um, you know, somebody with cancer, they'll just see this one, not good. If they handle people with a, a diabetes condition, they'll be able to tell this one, not good. So I can tell by appearance, yes. And if it's a young person, I can also tell if somebody's just sick. I can tell if somebody has anemia. I can tell if somebody is sick and fatigued. I can tell if somebody is dehydrated. I guess that is uh, the uh, that's the reward you get by after practicing for a few years. Yes. Called experience. Thank you very much. Anybody else with a question? Thank you very much, Adwell, for starting off the discussion. Any other question? Any other? Hi there. Uh, hi. Hi, um, my name is Noelle and I have a question. Yes, please. Um, was, um, you mentioned that uh, when you started getting taking the medication, mm. um, you started getting the hunger pangs and then that's when you knew that the medication is working. So, I mean, um, so how, you know, in practice, um, when you get the hunger pangs, pangs your natural response is, is to eat. Right. So is it possible that, you know, when you're on the diabetes medication, you could gain more weight or do the hunger pangs not do they, don't they have uh, or does it not necessarily have an impact on your weight? Or, you know, I'm just trying to figure out how to to manage that. Mm -hmm. Very, very good question. So what happens? I'm even trying to get a whiteboard here so that I can explain better. You see, when you start taking medication, 
for uh, which we call oral hypoglycemics. So they do different things. Some of them is to improve your insulin sensitivity. So what happens then your insulin, your body is sensitive to insulin. So when you eat the blood sugar, usually your blood sugar always increases and then the insulin is produced naturally to lower the blood sugar. And so when your blood, when you when you start taking medication, it means natural, it means your body has got two defenses for lowering blood sugar. We have naturally your body still producing some insulin to lower the sugar, and then you have the medication. So if you've already maybe started exercising, that already reduces your blood sugar levels. When you start watching your portions, that also reduces your blood sugar levels. So it means you have four things that are taking your blood sugar down. And so when your blood sugar actually becomes very low, you start getting hunger pangs. So it means the sugar levels are going very low. And for most people, the natural defense is they're going to increase their blood sugar. They're going to increase the food because you have hunger pangs. But, and then, you keep doing, you keep adding the food, you keep adding the food. And what happens? Then your sugar increases and your medication increases. And so you can gain weight. So what you need to do when you start getting hunger pants, and naturally, if you're managing your diet, exercising, the blood sugar, those two things will reduce your sugar and then the medication. So it's your dosage that needs to reduce. So when you're managing your diabetes, managing your diet, then you start getting hypos. It's an indication that your blood sugars are now getting better or your insulin sensitivity is better. And so you need to reduce the medication. If you don't reduce the medication, you're going to eat more, the sugars will be high, and then you're going to get more medication. And then your weight is going to go high. And then the cycle continues. Yeah. Have I answered your question, Noel? Yes, you've answered my question. That's clear. Thank you, Alice. Yeah. And usually it works better when you're monitoring your blood sugar, you're going to notice maybe when you start monitoring your blood sugar, let's take an example. You're probably getting blood sugars of 10 or 12 blood sugar after meals, or you're getting even higher. Your fasting is higher, seven, eight. So then when you start exercising and monitoring and, and losing and um, changing your diet, then your blood sugar starts lower, your blood sugars get lower. And you can see from monitoring from getting 10s, 12s, 13s, 14s, to maybe getting six, seven, eight, nine, then you know, then it starts to get lower. So when you monitor your blood sugar, then you actually know the blood sugars are lower. Now I need to go with the doctor with my data so that we can reduce the dosage of medication. And this is some of the things that we are going to teach you. We're going to teach you how to monitor your blood sugar, how to be able to know the blood sugar is high, or it is normal or it is low. And so you need to you know, just keep a chart which will provide and be able to tell you this is the sugar. You, you will record your blood sugars. And then you will see them going lower. And when you get to another level, you now go to back to your medical doctor, your practitioners with your, with your data and say, here, my sugars are lower. Please lower your medication because you will see the hypos. Yes, thank you. Good, thank you very much, Noel, for that. And thank you, Dr. Jung, for conclusively answering that. Raphael, next question, please. Yeah, I'm, I have a question because I don't know anything much about diabetes. Um, also, I have some symptoms like fatigue and I'm all, all always hungry, but I'm not sure about this, if this is um, diabetes. But I have a general question first. It is to do with there is diabetes one and diabetes um, two, mm -hmm. and I have a friend. I think he's diabetes one. He was right as a child, as a young um, four or five year old, already um, diagnosed as being diabetes. And I wonder if um, is this um, is this the reason that the pancreas is damaged right from the start, or is there something that can't be reversed? I think. Huh? That's my question. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Raphael, for the question. So 
the fact that you're feeling hungry all the time and fatigue, it could be just maybe your exercise habits. Uh, people who exercise hard have a high muscle mass. And if you don't, if you don't actually manage your diet, then you find that you're very hungry and you're very fatigued. And so we can start by maybe that can be the problem if if you score high on very good exercise. And then secondly, depending on the age, we can be having maybe something like anemia. Okay, so anytime we are 50 years plus and we start feeling like this, so we need to check anemia. And you also just need to check for diabetes. There's a test called HbA1c, uh, uh, glycosylated hemoglobin. So any doctor will just check and it will tell you what's your average blood sugars for the last three months. That should be able to, 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 um, to give you an answer. And so, because you're not supposed to feel fatigued and you're not feel hungry. So in this program, we'll be able to also answer that question and work with you until we get the answer and manage the symptoms. So what is type one diabetes? Uh, you asked the other question was the difference between type one and type two diabetes. So type one diabetes is actually when um, um, what happens is somebody gets an autoimmune condition where the body attacks itself, let's say. So it's an, an immune condition where the body attacks itself and also attacks the beta cells. Beta cells are in the pancreas and these are the ones that produce insulin. So the, an autoimmune condition can actually destroy the beta cells. And so you're not able to produce insulin. So a type one person will need to be using insulin. They are dependent on insulin from the time that they are diagnosed with diabetes. This kind of diabetes is also very aggressive. And if not well managed, people get complications very early in life. But if they are well managed, still they will, they will live long enough to die of old age and no diabetes complications. Type 1 diabetes, unfortunately, cannot be reversed because it is beta cells. There are actually research that shows that they can have, they can have transplants of the pancreas and it can then they can actually cure their diabetes but that is just research not yet large so it cannot be reversed but they can also control their diabetes and prevent complications by all means type 2 diabetes and uh, wait wait let's finish type 1 type 1 diabetes you can also get it when you're an adult there are people who get it when they're in their you know, an adult, 30s, 40s, and you can even get it when you're in 50s. Sometimes when type 2 diabetes is not controlled, people are given insulin, but then they think they're type 1. No. Sometimes when you're type 2 diabetes, it means you have insulin resistance. So your insulin is not working normally because of various issues, mostly because of also lifestyle problem. You know, you're overweight, you're always tired and fatigued, you don't have a good lifestyle, you don't sleep well, you don't eat well, you don't rest well, you don't, you don't take care of yourself. And so then it increases your risk. And also if your family have type two diabetes or diabetes, then your risk of getting diabetes is high. So type two diabetes is a progressive disease, it means if you don't manage it very well, it gets worse. So it progresses and it gets worse. So you can get, uh, you can damage your pancreas. And so you also have to take type one. Uh, you also have to take type, I uh, mean, you have to take insulin to manage your diabetes. Type two diabetes can be reversed if you haven't yet moved to type one diabetes. It can be reversed. And there are so many people who have been able to reverse it. It's actually called putting it into remission. Meaning if you change your lifestyle, change your diet, change your lifestyle, like we'll see what it is you have to change, then you reverse diabetes and then you actually work on maintaining a healthy lifestyle. Then you can, it can be on remission for years. But if you change, put it into remission, then go back to your old lifestyle that impacts your sugar, then you're going to get it right back and in full swing. Yes, thank you. I hope that answers. If you need any clarification, that's also okay. Yes. Thank you very much. Yes. Okay, you're welcome. Okay, thank you too. 
Um, I think I saw Alwell putting up her hand again, if we have nobody else. So we have two. Alwell, let me take somebody else before you. I think, um, who do I have? I have Alwell first then. I can't see the other person. Mm -hmm. The other person is Shiko. Shiko Gashiri. Yes. And then okay. there's also Sarah. Mm -hmm. okay. Let's start with Shiko then. Then Sarah, then Alwell, in that order. Okay, hi everyone. Can you hear me? Yes, yes we very can. Well, thank you. Okay, just um I've been diabetic for what nine years now. And um I I had it first gestationally with my firstborn, mm -hmm. and then um it went away for a year and then it came back. Mm -hmm. So um for Dr. Alice, this is a question for you. You mentioned something like you can you it can go in type two diabetes can go into remission if it doesn't become type one. Mm -hmm. So how can type two diabetes become type one? That's my first question. Mm -hmm. And sorry, my second question is: um, Can you be type two? Can you have type two diabetes, but not necessarily because of um, maybe your lifestyle or your weight, but you have an injury of some kind also? Is that is that possible? Because I've seen many doctors tell you, yes, you're diabetic, but they don't tell you why. Mm -hmm. I mean, yes, you you have type two diabetes, but why are you why? I mean, that's mm -hmm. that's the question I always ask myself. <laughs> because I, I think mm -hmm. if I have an injury, um, then it probably won't reverse. So if I even try to reverse it and I don't know that I have an injury, so how do you tell why you have the type two diabetes? Okay. Thank you. Very good question. Thank you, Shiko. It's nice to see you here again. I hope we are going full swing this time. <laughs> yes, yes. Yes. So um, so very good. So let's just say the other types of diabetes that we didn't mention is gestational diabetes, which of course becomes because of hormonal changes due to pregnancy. And then we also have another type of diabetes that is called impaired glucose tolerance. That's just a pre-diabetic stage where um, your body is, um, is able to utilize the sugar, but it takes a very long time to utilize the sugar from food. So how can type two diabetes become type one? So when, when I, when I, what I mean by that is that you become insulin dependent. So let's, let's just say you reverse to type one. And this is because if you're type two diabetes, your sugars are not controlled your lifestyle is not changed and the blood sugars are not well managed with medication, then you can actually destroy your pancreas because there is um, what we call insulin response index is very, very high. Because every time to eat, your blood sugar becomes very high. Your body is always overproducing insulin. And then it gets to a point that it cannot produce insulin. But this is no, not normally, this is normally actually can last for some time. So the doctors will put you on insulin. And then after some time, they can try because your, 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 your pancreas can actually restore itself. And then you can actually go back to just taking oral hypoglycemics. But I wish Dr. Nyawera was here to help me answer some of these questions. Is our family doctor in the room? I am not, I'm not seeing her, yes. So, and uh, other types, other, other causes of type two diabetes can actually also be steroids. You can see the client that we were talking with about earlier, the one who was sharing his story, he got type two diabetes because of steroids. So when you have some conditions, uh, sometimes you're put on steroids and um, that can actually damage your pancreas and you can end up being type two, uh, getting diabetes. And also uh, patients who are on, um, they have cancer and they're being treated with a chemotherapy that can also damage the pancreas or the beta cells and they can also get diabetes. So definitely there are so many causes of diabetes. Lifestyle is just one of them, but there are so many causes that even, even infections, sometimes you can get infections that can actually affect your pancreas. And then that can also uh, drive you to um, either a, your permanently diabetes and you have to control on medication or you're diabetic for a short time and then you can recover accordingly and be managed very well as well. But all these conditions, all these diabetes status can actually be controlled 
to prevent complications. That is always the goal. Help you to control to prevent complications because diabetes is a blood vessel disease. So what it does, it destroys the blood vessel. So it destroys the blood vessels to the eye. That's why people can get blind to the heart. That's why you can damage your heart and also get an enlarged heart to the kidney. So it destroys the blood vessels, taking supplying blood to the kidney. So you get a kidney problem damaging the blood uh, vessels that supply blood to your limbs. That's why you can get an amputation. So it is a blood vessel disease, but it can be controlled so that you do not get these complications, yet you're diabetic and you have a normal life. Thank you. Thank you for that. I think we take the next question from Stephen. Hello. Hello. Yes. Hello, Stephen. Okay, sorry. Let me just move to a quiet place. Can I give the chance to somebody else? Put that no, no. I'm, I'm just I'm just talking now. Now, uh, uh, I wanted to uh, have uh, maybe more information or maybe share my experience. Okay, first of all, I got the diabetes with diabetes. And it was COVID related. So I attended the clinics and uh, for a while, brought me down. So last year, last year I stopped uh, the needles and everything. So I was uh, managing my, my blood sugar. So uh, in other things this year, uh, I had an issue with my stomach, so I was diagnosed with uh, colon cancer. And the sugars went up, so uh, I had two surgeries. So after that, I realized uh, diabetes is really so I have kept it. So right now, I'm, I'm monitoring the sugars and watching what I eat. And then you see, anyway, my first history is I've been a very uh, uh, active guy, I've been doing sports, and uh, uh, I was in the gym. But I think my life has changed because uh, when I got married, I stopped being a big and uh, though I was a big person, I was huge. And uh, during a week, I stopped with him, and I think uh, that I managed to get a bit of a not say that uh, with the time, I was not able to see the TV in the small capsules. So I went for an eye test and uh, the doctor. I'm not laughing, but I didn't go for that. So when I got to COVID is when uh, my journey started. So I just wanted to find out, uh, because for me, uh, in the family, my dad was starting about uh, five years ago. But that was the latest, latest uh, diagnosis, because he's only in his 70s. So I just wanted to find out uh, uh, diabetes and uh, 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 if you have other issues like now cancer, which I have, uh, how, how can you manage? How can I manage? I want to see some help from various sources. I just want to hear maybe advice from Dr. Thank you. Okay. I must confess that I didn't hear most of it because there's a lot of noise in the background. So Lorraine, maybe you can help if you heard most of it. I think he's, uh, I struggled also, mm. but he said, I think he has a history of diabetes. Is that hard? I don't know if he's still there five years or something. Yeah. And he has, is it cancer as well? So mm. I think it's managing diabetes. So he has diabetes and cancer or mm -hmm. something. I think that's what I go on to. Yeah. So maybe the treatment for cancer um, increased his risks, but already he had a risk as a, as, as a, because of genes. Eh? Okay, so, so um, Stephen, mm -hmm. I might need to probably have another time with you if you're joining the program, because uh, I'll have individual sessions with everybody so you understand where you're coming from. But diabetes can be controlled. It doesn't matter what you're taking. What we need to do is study the blood sugar. What are the readings? And then work together with your doctor and work together with, uh, you know, work together with you, managing your diet and, and your lifestyle. 
and it can actually be controlled. And remember, whenever you have a condition, you have like cancer and your diabetes is high, then it worsens the cancer. And when the cancer is not well controlled, then it worsens the diabetes. But all these things can actually be controlled. So we can work together very well to be able to, to help you manage it. And remember, as much as we are managing diabetes, we are also going to be able to help you also manage other underlying conditions from the dietary interventions that we'll do. Remember when you're diabetic, maybe you have, di you have hypertension, you're being managed for hypertension, then diabetes, then you're being managed for cancer, then you're being managed for cholesterol. But when it comes to applying lifestyle lessons and applying dietary intake, one change, one change in your lifestyle, in your sleeping, in your exercise, in your diet is going to target all those conditions. And by the time you are finished with you in six weeks, everything's dropped. Your cholesterol is better. Your blood pressure is better. Your diabetes is better. You know, you sleep better and you're feeling healthier. So that is what the program will help you to achieve. Yes. Thank you. Okay, Stephen, I hope that works for you, but please please have a personal session with Dr. John. I'm sure there are interventions. Thank you. I think next we have Aluel, you had a question. Then you have Regina, okay. Yes, Dr. Aluel and then Regina. Aluel, go ahead and mute. Um, earlier, Dr. O Dr. Ojong had mentioned that Okay, can you hear me? Yes. Yes, we can. Can you hear me? Yes, we can, Aluel. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, earlier, Dr. Ojong had mentioned that diabetes type 2 can cause amputation and uh, blindness. And I would like to ask the question, how does it cause blindness or amputation and also the heart to enlarge? Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you, Aluel. Um, if the blood sugar is not controlled, and we said diabetes is actually referred to as, as blood vessel disease. So if the blood sugar is not controlled, then it actually destroys the blood vessels to the heart and to your limbs and to the kidneys. So it destroys the blood vessels, supplying blood to those kidneys. So that's how you get the problems, just to live in, in lay language. And of course, when your heart is destroyed, it will always try to work very, very hard. And also if you're overweight, it works very hard. So in the process of trying to work hard to supply the blood, then that muscle actually ends up expanding. And so then you have, you end up having an enlarged heart. So more details during the programs like specific and probably that will be delivered by our family doctor so they can explain uh, further. Thank you. Thank you, Aluel. You're very alert. Mm -hmm. Next, question. we go to, to Regina. Yeah, Regina should actually Good evening. ask these questions. Yeah. <laughs> Good evening. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yes, we can. Thank you. You, you. you can you can hear me. Okay, thank you. One minute. Let me just mute something completely. Yeah. So Alice, um, Dr. Alice, I am uh, who first and foremost basically just commenting mm -hmm. and you know just acknowledging that you're doing a fantastic job. I like your talk. You are beyond just what you think because I think you're handling a lot of the medical as well as uh, the, uh, you know, as well as uh, the nutritional aspects of diabetes. So you're doing a good job. Uh, mine were just comments. One other thing that I just wanted to add on, I remember there was a few questions about type one diabetes and um, there may be children who are already born with a condition that would likely get them into type one diabetes when they are very young, you know, at a very early stage of their lives. But a lot of times type one diabetes is also caused by viral infections. It's also caused by viral infections um, in young people as well as in adults. In fact, even um, many times when adults uh, con contract hepatitis A, they are likely to have a problem with insulin production. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, so uh, so that that is important. And I don't know uh, about your patients. I I don't know whether most of your patients are just on uh, metformin, which is an insulin sensitizer. But there are three ways of managing diabetes, basically, or the three traditional ways, uh, where uh, maybe the patient is managed managed with lifestyle and um, and uh, insulin uh, in improving insulin sensitivity. Basically, that is metformin, um, or sometimes they can also be put in what what are called scritagogues, which are drugs that increase the production of insulin mm -hmm. from the pancreas. So they're getting the, ins the 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 pancreas to pump out more insulin. Sometimes you find patients have been put on those two, an insulin sensitizer, say like metformin, alongside another drug that increases insulin uh, sens sensitivity. And then there's, there's the other traditional treatment of, of insulin. A patient is being given insulin uh, supplementation alongside um, uh, insulin sensitizer like metformin. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then maybe the, 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 the scritagogues may be stopped in that case. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Regina. And you will be with us so that you can help us answer some of these questions. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. I think we'll have Sarah to give us a, her question, and Emmanuel will take over from that. As he asks his question, he'll tell us his story. So, Sarah, please. Okay. Hi, everyone. Hi, Sarah. I'm fine. Mm. <laughs> okay, there's a question. Okay, most of it, at least you've answered, but uh, there's this. Um, I wanted to ask a question about nerves. Does um, diabetes uh, affect nerves? And then also, does it cause blood clots? Okay. Regina, would you like to answer that, please? Thank you for being here. <laughs> Okay, what what are, what, what uh, from the knowledge that I have, I'm not a doctor, but I have worked in uh, the area of diabetes a good maybe half of my life, so I think I know quite a bit about diabetes. So the, as Ali said, the main thing about diabetes is that it is a vascular disease, so it affects both the macro and the micro vessels. The macro is the peripheral, that is like the legs. That's why you find people getting amputated because blood is not flowing properly into the periphery. And the micro is where it affects the retinal blood supply so they can go blind. Uh, it affects the kidney blood supply so someone can already have kidney complications, kidney insufficiency and all that. A, a lot of times uh, there tends to be another um like peripheral peripheral nerve damage in, in 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 diabetes. So you will find that a lot of diabetic patients will also now, on top of having vascular problems, they will have peripheral nerve involvement. So that is what again would cause uh, them not to have sensation in the periphery. And that's why you may find people getting injured in their their legs and they end up getting they end up getting amputated uh, maybe they've developed some gangrene or something like that so there is a peripheral nerve involvement as well uh there was another one what uh did i miss one other one that uh, blood ask? blood clot can a diabetes person get blood clots now uh it diabetes does not lead to blood clots but usually what happens is that it leads to vascular uh, see, actually, the type 2 diabetic patients are treated like as patients who've already had a heart attack, which mm -hmm. is called also a myocardial infarction. And, mm -hmm. and this is because you find that when one has type 2 diabetes, uh, then other metabolic uh, conditions set in, like uh, abnormal cholesterols. And that leads to, you know... Uh, uh, thickening or blockaging blockages of vessels and particularly coronary vessels and when someone has diabetes they are more likely if they are not well managed if they are not well managed or managed at all to get a heart attack because they are likely to get 
a blockage in the coronary arteries, and that is what a heart attack is. Yes, thank you. So actually, yeah, diabetes increases the risk of plague buildup. So your, your blood vessels actually, they form plague. Maybe if you excuse me, I will just show you um, something that happens. So you can, so because you're, oh, because you're going to form a plague buildup, then you can actually form a clot. So it's same thing, it makes your blood vessels to form a plague, like it reduces in size, and then that increases your risk of forming uh, blood clots. And just like Regina said, diabetic is always treated as a, like you have a, going to have a heart attack to prevent that. And any a diabetes who's poorly controlled, then is going to actually get a problem with their clots in their lifetime care. And so this is some of the things we want to prevent by actually helping you to manage and control your diabetes. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Regina. consultant thank you. Regina, for for that uh, for that input, and then thank you, Alice. Mm -hmm. um, Emmanuel, you raise your hand to ask a question, but you are slotted in to talk to us about what your experience has been, uh, and in Dr. Zhang's program or the DTLC program, where to really tell us has it worked for you? Was it worth it? Did you benefit? Just share your experience so that uh, all of us can know we're in the right place, getting the right information for diabetes. Okay, so uh, hello and good. Uh, I'm not too sure what time zone you're in, but good evening, everyone. Good evening. My name is Emmanuel Jonah. Um, mm -hmm. I, I don't really have a question. I actually raised my hand to, to pass a comment, uh, listening to um, the comments and the questions that were, you know, being bundled around. Okay, so I, I was in the last, um, uh, should I say, session of the, of the program. Mm -hmm. I don't want to jump to the end, but let me first of all start with the, my a bit of a background um, information so that you get to appreciate where I'm coming from. Mm -hmm. So at some point, um, a little over a year ago, I was uh, diagnosed with a condition. I've forgotten what the, the medical name is, but basically my heart was not pumping enough blood to the rest of my body. And so... Um, at some point, I actually passed out, and that's what necessitated my going to the hospital to to have myself, you know, uh, do a complete checkup to to be sure what was going on. Mm -hmm. And so after that, I was put on a number of medications. I actually shared that with uh, Doctor Alice. And um, what what happened was I decided to take, and I mean, turn over a new leaf. I didn't really know what I was doing but I decided to change my lifestyle as it were. And then along the way, I got in touch with a friend of mine, an old schoolmate of mine um, who is into nutrition and she introduced me to Dr. Alice. And so that's how come I got onto the program. I got onto the program not knowing what to expect uh, mainly, but um, with a lot of you know um, expectations, if I should put it that way. I didn't know what to expect, but I had some good hope based on what my 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 mate had mentioned now um this is what happened so going through the program i realized that um my food choices first of all changed my my i'm from ghana and typically most of our foods are carbohydrate based and so i was doing a lot of carbohydrate a lot of carbohydrates a lot and i'm sure that was probably one of the contributing factors to the condition that, that i was diagnosed with and I realized over time, going through the program, my food choices, as I mentioned, changed. Um, I was doing less of carbohydrates. I don't want to go into the specifics. I'm sure when you go through the program, you will appreciate everything I'm talking about now. But I realized my carbohydrate, carbohydrate intake went down significantly or to uh, some uh, reasonable levels. I started taking a lot of vegetables. And that I must be very honest with you. Vegetables has literally changed my life, if I should be honest with you on that. And now anybody that I meet literally knows that, look, as for Emmanuel, um, if you want to get him, give him vegetables. That's basically it. And the next thing is exercising. I grew up as a sportsman, but somewhere along the way, I lost you know, touch with having to exercise and all that. But going through this program, I realized that it was something I had to take seriously. And so... I was basically, I, I, since then, even now, uh, today I had a good walk. I've been walking all through, almost every day I try to do 
a certain, uh, I set a target for myself and try to do that, that as a minimum number of steps in that day. And it's, it's really changed my life. The kind of food I eat has changed. Exercising, now I sleep well, even though I'm still struggling to do the, the required minimum number of, of sleep hours. I, I, even for whatever number of uh, hours I'm able to sleep, I sleep well. As for that, I must be honest. There are some, some aspects that I'm sure will be discussed during the program. But those are two key elements that I want to mention, the food, the exercise. And for especially for, well, women, are, when it comes to com compliments, it's, it's uh, you look beautiful and all that. But for men, I think that one key thing that I cherish, maybe personally I cherish, is the fact that a lot of comments are coming, compliments are coming in to the effect that I look younger than my age. I can actually turn on my camera and tell you my age. Mm. If, if... Yes. <laughs> Let's pick up the challenge, Emmanuel. Go ahead. Okay. So, <laughs> so I'm actually in the car now. It's a bit dark. I don't know if you can see my face. Yes. Um, yeah. I'm actually 39 years old. And initially, people were telling me, I mean, people thought I was 45 plus. But when I went through the exercise, um, I started taking the, the routine seriously. I realized that I was now getting more compliments to the effect that I look younger. Just a, just a few days ago, I was I traveled out for a conference. And at the conference, somebody that had, you know, I've been with for a while and knows me quite well, uh, saw me and was quite surprised and asked, uh, what, have I been, what have I been doing? Because he's realized that I've really lost weight. And when I say weight, I'm talking about I was in excess of 105 uh, kilograms. Now I'm doing about eight. The last time I checked, between 88 and 89. So you can imagine the the the, the change. I even tell tell the guys that look now I have six pack, and it's all because of uh, <laughs> the routines I'm on now, the lifestyle changes more significantly. The lifestyle changes, and I think that that's one interesting thing that this program gives. Uh, it, it will give you a whole 360, you know, change in your lifestyle. You might think that you are doing everything right till you meet Dr. Alice. After that, I will say that any day, any time, because um, now things have settled for me. I don't have any issues. I used to have some palpitations. All those are off. I'm off all my medications. I don't take any medicine at all, at all, not even one, at all. And I, I would say that it's thanks to Dr. Alice. I think that she's done a phenomenal job. She continues to do that. And one other thing is um, sometimes you have the opportunity to engage her one-on-one. -on -one, and so you have tailored support services from her as well. And so for those that have been able to, those that have mastered the courage to actually show up today, I will encourage you to stay on. Don't give up along the way. No matter how challenging it appears to you, don't, don't give up. Keep going. You may not get everything perfect. And they actually acknowledge that. You may not get every single thing perfect, but you realize that your, your body is begin, beginning to respond to all the changes that you are going through. You, be, you begin to realize that you wake up and all the body pains, all the muscle ache and all those things, they literally go away. And so maybe that's my little or short sermon just to encourage, encourage us to uh, be part of this program. Um, I'm going to make it a point to talk to a few other people to see some people within my industry that I think really need help. I'm going to try and encourage them to join because um, what this program has done for me, I can't put value in terms of monetary value on it. I think that is priceless. And so um, let's let's try, give off our best. I mean, what doctor is doing is for her own good. It's not for anybody. So try and stay on. Don't Don't give up along the way and try and uh, discipline yourself to stay committed to the program all through to the end and you come back look for my number and thank me <laughs> all right thank you That's very nice much Carolina. let me I have a question for you before you go other than the fact that okay. you look really good thank you very much keep okay. up the good job thank um, you was it hard was it hard taking up the program is it too involving will it kill us if we take it up no, it's not. It's not. You, you see, I think that a lot of this depends on uh, your your self discipline, and your willingness to actually subject yourself to the the program. It's not. It's not anything strenuous, really. It's not. It's more of being conscious. Look, now I'm conscious of, on a daily basis. I'm conscious about the food I eat. At a, a sitting, I'm conscious about the quantities I eat. 
Uh, yesterday, I was at a restaurant eating with a family, mm -hmm. and it, it was clear that look, um, Emmanuel is managing his <laughs> his carbohydrates. Uh, you can, when you look at my plate, you can actually see, you can tell that I'm very conscious of the food I eat, and so I, I don't think it's anything strenuous. I don't think it's something far fetched or far reaching. It's something anybody can do once you commit yourself to do it. And like I said, nobody is perfect. So you may not get it all at the same time. But over time, when you look back, you realize that things have changed. Your body would have changed. Your eating lifestyle would have changed. Your exercising, even your breathing. You know, you realize that your system, the, the body has changed or is responding positively. And so I don't think it's anything extraordinary in terms of uh, being able to follow or strenuous, no, nothing like that. Thank you. Very good. And maybe another last question is: How many tablets were you taking before? You mean you mean the medication? Yes, the medicine. Okay, so the medication was basically to prevent blood clot because the doctor was not was not too sure whether um, I was having any blood clot issues. The other was to also help the the heart to pump enough blood to the rest of the body. Now, let me just explain this other side. So the range that was given to me as normal, um, I don't know what the term is, but basically be between 55% and 70% is what the heart is expected to, to pump out, right? To be able to supply blood to the, the, the rest of the body. I was doing about 45. And by the time I came off the medications, I was doing 63. Mm -hmm. And this is over a period of say maybe six seven months, mm -hmm. you know. So so the the in fact the doctor was surprised. The one who did the test that was it ECG. I've forgotten what the test is, but he was also very surprised. And so I think that once you you get on the program and you commit yourself to following what you are taught, because look, you might think you know, but when you come in, you realize that I didn't know about the the double caps, triple caps, and all those things. I didn't know anything about that. When I was growing up in school, I mean, everybody knew that uh, what we call carbohydrates is basically carbs. That's it. But I didn't know legumes. I didn't know even um, uh, plantain and all those other, you know, I didn't know all that. Were, but, but I'm sure I'll reserve that for, for those that are, you know, coming in to join the program to learn. It's a good learning cycle uh, or learning curve. So um, let's commit ourselves to it. Thank you. As you were saying, you, you used to take a lot of medicine, eh? Like yeah, as for the medication, yes. The, sorry, I, I lost that along the way. Um, yes. The medications, um, I may have to check the, the dosage and then share it with you later. I've taken all those. In fact, I've wiped everything off my mind when it oh. comes to my <laughs> That's a good problem. I'm not too That's sure what to tell you, problem. but <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> Medications are something I like. And so that's okay. one, one motivation for, you know, staying on to make sure that I get things out of this medication. So let's not take you back there. We'll take you back there. Thank you so much. For your okay. Okay. Sorry. Oh, thank you, very much. Thank you so much. much. Thank you very much. Yes. Okay. So oh. that's it. <laughs> Truth. That's the program. Thank you. Okay. And it has worked for Emmanuel. It will work for you as well. But what is it? What are we talking about? What's this program, Dr. Jong? You want to take us through so that we know what to look forward to in the next six weeks? Yes. Yeah. So thank you so much. Yes. You can see my slides? Yes, we can. Okay. So, um, this program was inspired by what I started in 2010, what I call a kilo watchers, kilo, kilo watchers. So my practice was turning 10 years old. And so I decided what can we do differently? And so I had been doing something. I had started a PhD program on health psychology because I wanted to understand why is it that you have people who are not learned, you know, but then they can't even take good care of their blood sugars or blood pressures. When you tell them monitor, they don't. They keep coming to see you, but they're not doing anything about it. So after having gone through that training, then I realized that what actually works, a group wellness program works hard, helps, um, 
helps people a lot more than individual program. So I started the Kilo Watchers program where I worked out with my clients and we, 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 we manage everybody as a group. So we had nutrition sessions, exercise sessions, and uh, you know many other sessions together as a group. And the success was just enormous. And so I did this for five years. Then I took off to go to school full time and do the PhD. Then I came, I came back and then shortly after that, it was COVID. And so we said, so how are we going to help? How are we going to practice? And so my friend and I, you're going to meet her next week when she comes into the program, Dr. Hiba. Uh, we decided, why don't we do this? Uh, why, why don't we do this as an online program and actually test it? So we actually applied for some funding and we did this as an online program based in the UK, but dealing with the Africans and Caribbeans. But we did a 24 week program. So that was very long and it was tiring, but still people were very, very successful. Like it, it went very well. And so in Kenya, we've done 12, we've done four seasons of 12 weeks program, but that's a general one. It's a lifestyle program. But I realized that when the diabetic persons are mixed in that program, they actually miss out and they don't learn some of the things that I've realized if a diabetic person learns, then it helps them to control their blood sugar. So, so a group wellness program has been shown to actually provide better support because I might not even be able to tell you everything, but you'll be watching other people. What are they doing? This is how they're eating because part of the program, you'll put your plates and you will ask questions. And so everybody benefits. So you have other people holding you and not just me. Okay, so it's gonna be six weeks, but because this week one is really introduction, so we are going to give you a last, we are going to give you an extra week. So it's going to be a seven week program. So activities, of course, session one is just to enroll and introduce you to this program. But the activities are going to be nutrition and health education, patient education. Because you're few, I'm going to have some individual sessions, especially to understand what your issue is. And we're also going to send a questionnaire where you're going to tell us what, what, how many years have you been diabetic? What medication are you taking? What's the issue? So that I know, I know each person when, what, what they are taking, what are their challenges, and then that will help me to educate you better. We have weekly nutrition education sessions and not just nutrition, you'll see what they all entail. And we have a challenge that you're going to do every week. We'll answer questions, and we will provide a lot of resources. So each session will have a topic and we are going to collect data and we are going to provide handouts. So really it's a challenge, it's a challenge. We are challenging you and it's, we are engaging in a contest. So it's like some kind of competition to reverse type two diabetes, to reduce cholesterol, to better control your blood pressure because some people who have diabetes, these are, the friends that come along with diabetes, controlled blood pressure and cholesterol. I remember when you manage your lifestyle, it targets everything at a go. When you're, only, when you're treating the condition, you'll have to take medication for diabetes, for high cholesterol, for blood pressure, for blood clot, and many other things. But with lifestyle, one lifestyle, one you know, good education targets all of this. And so the goal here is to have better control of your diabetes. So the truth is this, many people who are not diabetics who can benefit from this session if they have cholesterol and, and, and blood pressure, but they're better off in the other general program. But this program is really good for diabetes so that they, they can learn about their diabetes and we can talk about diabetes. So when you learn and you have knowledge, you manage your diabetes better. And of course, for people who have type two diabetes and overweight, then the program will also help you to, to lose weight. And so uh, we want you to have good health, feel good, and uh, become fit. And also, of course, when your diabetes is not controlled and you don't know what to do, then it also affects your emotional health. So, and of course, sometimes your emotional health also affects the way you eat, which affects your diabetes. And we're going to have a session on life. So the TLC, the D actually means diabetes or diabetes. My specialization is in obesity and diabetes. So don't feel bad if we may use the word obesity, not at all, because it's just a lot of, it's just a condition that we can manage. So total lifestyle change means that if we actually 
change our lifestyle because you will learn how sleep affects your diabetes and your health poor sleep or circadian rhythm, how you can exercise and not sending you to the gym or to go to a weight to a weightlifting context. No, just making a few steps every day, how that can actually manage your diabetes. And over time with support and guidance, and we also are learning from each other, we will be able to achieve that. And please note that if you want to get something you have never gotten before, like be able to control your diabetes better. You've got to do something you've never done before. So for goals, the goal setting, we are going to cover that next week. So I'm just going to jump through that. But the type of goals we want you to set is your blood sugars control goals, dietary goals, fitness goals, health goals, and of course your lifestyle goals. We, we, for people who have already paid, we've added you to a group and we will add everybody to the group. So this support, this group program is going to provide fitness support, glucose control, because you're going to uh, in, in share a lot of information. Dietary intake, we want to see your pictures. There's an app that we are going to send you a link to, to download. And when you, when you join this app, we can see everybody's step, everybody's steps. So we can be able to see in a row, we are going to be maybe 10 or 15 or 20. Out of these 20, where are you? So you'll find that the highest person will always be top if they have more steps and the last person will be last. So we, that also motivates people. And so this is the app. We're just going to send you a link. So don't worry about it once we create it. We expect everybody to post their food because from this <laughs> that you put in, we're going to learn and be able to tell you. And when we learn about what you call carbohydrate intelligence that, um, that Emmanuel was talking about, so you'll be able to know if you're having a double carbohydrate, triple carbohydrate, and how that affects your blood sugar. And then usually when you post your foods, we'll analyze it as a group and also we'll analyze it as an individual. And so we'll be able to recommend how should you eat. And you can see, you can see this is a plate that was at the beginning and probably this is a plate that now people have changed, you know, so they can manage their portions. They have more variety. And so we'll be able to help you to learn even how to manage your meals, how to, how to plan and have better meals. And for those who have spouses, please make sure they join you on the session. So we are going to have week one to six. Like I said, we'll give you one extra week. So defining week one will be defining diabetes. What is your why? Why are you here? And why do you want to manage your diabetes? So start thinking about it. Because if you don't know what your why is, you're not going to be successful. So we want all of you to be successful. So we want you to identify what is your why. Then we talk about glucose monitoring and medication management. When Regina was answering questions, she was talking about, you know, you're put on medication that increases insulin production. You put on medication that reduces, uh, that increases insulin sensitivity. So really, what medication are you taking? Do you know what it is doing? So do you know how to manage your medication? Carbohydrate intelligence. How does this affect you? And so we will look at, so we need your food pictures. We need your food plates to be able to identify the areas that have problems and to be able to help you to, to manage that. Circadian rhythm, how does it affect your diabetes? Relationship with food and emotional eating, how does this affect your diabetes? Fitness and breathing exercises, how does this affect and improve your diabetes? And of course, managing comorbidities, extra information on how do you manage your diabetes, your, you know, other conditions like blood pressure, cholesterol. But like we say, there are some people who have cancer. How do we manage it with your diabetes? So for some people, we might actually have individual sessions and then, or rather than group sessions. But most of this is going to be discussed in a group. And so we will all learn this and any other information that's important for you. If we realize at it that six weeks is not going to work, then we might extend to 12 weeks and we will just need your support so that you get the best out of this. We'll provide for you resources. We have books. We will recommend apps that you're going to use, especially to monitor your blood sugar. 
we will provide meal plans for you but this is only going to come maybe at week three because you need to you need to post your food pictures and don't be shy we're not going to judge anybody we need to know what you're eating i can't start prescribing for you food before i see what you're eating so we will need to see your meal so start taking pictures and start posting on the group don't be shy if you're afraid to post for yourself you send to me as an individual and then I'll just post them in the group. And we will provide links and more information to be able to support you. And of course, remember, taking drugs without eating properly is like washing your hands and drying them in the dirt. And so I promise you, I've done this for so long that I can promise that if you make just a little bit of the changes, not even 100%, you will actually be successful in controlling your diabetes. Thank you very much. Over to you, Ms. Lorraine. Thank you. Thank you very much. So we do agree. We know your risk, know your response. And what has happened, we've been able to focus on knowing that risk of getting type two diabetes. And we are now getting, in the next six weeks, we shall get the right information to help us manage diabetes and related complications. And so we shall be acting in tandem with the 2023 Diabetes Day slogan. Which is? Now, which is that, which is what I've read. Know your risk, know your response, get okay. the right information and manage diabetes. Mm -hmm. Good. Yes. Now, what is the investment? Because we have to put in something to get. So uh, Dr. Joang mentioned we've opened the group already for those who have paid. So the amount paid in Kenya shillings is 15,000 Kenya shillings for the program, for the six week program. In dollars, for those of us from the country, from around the world, Dr. Joan, that comes to USD. 100 dollars, 100 USD or 100 euros, <laughs> uh, depending on which part of the world you are. So yeah. 15,000 for the Kenya shilling, uh, for, for the Kenya population, 50 euros or 50 dollars for those of us watching from out of the country. 50. Mm -hmm. 100. So there's $100. Ox, yeah. my bad. Sorry. 15,000. Let me say that oh, again. Okay, okay. So 15,000 Kenya shillings, 100 euros or $100 for those of us out of the country. I hope that is clear. Mm -hmm. um, I hope that is clear for all of us. So that is your investment, but what you stand to gain is so much more greater than that investment. What would you say? The return on investment is much higher because you get to reverse your type 2 diabetes or send it into remission. Or like Emmanuel said, reduce the amount you spend on drugs. And you'll know, again, whatever investment you make is actually cheaper than what you spend on the drugs. So think about it. Make the wise choice and manage your diabetes. I hope you have enjoyed being with us today. Any parting shot, Dr. Ojuang, before we close the show? Yes. So the parting shot is, so remember, genes load the gun, but it's your lifestyle that pulls the trigger. So if your parents have diabetes, your relatives have diabetes, you can still control it and put it into remission. It is just your lifestyle. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Dr. John. Mm -hmm. Regina, parting shot. Uh, it's, uh, it's not really a putting shot. It's a question. I just wanted to uh, find out the sessions. How long do they run? Mm -hmm. the, uh, my biggest uh, competitor to, to health is probably time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I think it's good to know how long it takes so that we can be able to really work to ensure that we participate. Okay. Thank you very much. The sessions actually run for 90 minutes, one and a half hours, and we do it at 8 p.m. And this is because um, having started, I think the first session used to be like at 6 or 4 p.m. season one. That was difficult for most people. And then the suggestion was that we move it later and later. And we found that 8 o'clock work. In fact, we had an, a lot of people who had children. And they're like, by 8 p.m. Kenyan time, we have put children to bed. And so we are all relaxed. And for people who came from work like me, I've rested a little bit. So it starts at 8 to 9.30. So it's one and a half hours strictly. Thank you. OK. Mm -hmm. Good with that. Sorry, every day? Is it every day? 
every week every oh, monday. so it's going to be every monday at 8 p.m so set your alarm and set your calendars and set your clocks so that you know that 8 p.m every monday we are here for the next seven, for the next six weeks thank you i think that that's good and monday is a good day yes okay good thank you thank you so much so i it, i think that was a good start to the details see mm -hmm. for the season six but this is special diabetes total lifestyle change i saw an interesting quote about diabetes that flips it to the other side mm -hmm. it says diabetes is not a limitation but a motivator to live a healthy and fulfilling life and that is what uh, the program and Dr. Zhuang aim to do to help us to live a healthy and fulfilling life. So thank you for being with us. Thank you, Dr. Zhuang. Thank you, Regina, for the wisdom. We appreciate all that uh, has gone into it. And we thank you for making time, investing time to be here. Now just invest a little money and let's work on the diabetes. So thank you, everybody. Good night and see you next Monday. <laughs>